Didn't they just do a wonderful job today? Man, they just lifted me up. Got me ready, guys. Awesome, awesome. Well, summer's here. How many know summer is officially now here? We've made it through the memorial time. The pools are all open, so we know it's summertime. So good to see you. So good to see you. And let's begin today working on a series, Believe the Way of Freedom. I want you to go with me to Hebrews chapter 11 in your Bibles. Let's start there today. Hebrews chapter 11. We're working on a top 10 list of what to know about faith according to the scriptures. And we've looked at seven of them. We've got three to go. And I'm going to give you another today in connection with what faith is. And uh, of course, we're, we're to walk by faith and not by sight. And, and we're learning about it. But we're learning why it's the way to freedom. And we'll start here with verse 1. It says, now faith is being sure of what we hope for. Sure. For being convinced, convinced of what we do not see, for by it, this kind of faith, the people of old received God's commendation, God's approval. Now look down at verse 6, and it tells us why they received it through this faith. For, now, for, without faith, it is impossible to please Him, for the one who approaches God must believe that He exists and that he rewards those who seek him. Amen. How many believe God rewards those who seek him? That he's good like that, right? That he's good like that. So that's part of our truth. Real quickly now, the seven we've looked at, one and two, one's journey of faith begins with believing God is and that he is good. Number three, faith is of the heart. Number four, you can have faith in your heart with doubt in your head and your faith will still work. Number five, faith comes by hearing and hearing by God's word. Number six, faith is a choice. And here's number seven. I want you to bring this one up again. Number seven, and we're going to look at this and then add to it. This is how the spirit of faith is the spirit of victory. And we see this in 1 John. The spirit of faith is the spirit of victory. Notice, for everyone born of God overcomes the world. That's good news, the challenges that we face in this world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world even our faith. So who is it that overcomes the world? You were supposed to say me. <laughs> right there. Let me read it again. You, you missed out there. So who is it that overcomes the world? Me. Boy, that was a little, 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 little weak. Let's try one more time. Who is it that overcomes the world? Me. There we go. Ooh, you're starting to sound like this right here, right? The one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. So here's what I want you to see again. I want to look here at the differences between faith and doubt. Faith and doubt. Because there's so much hiding here. Um, so much is going on in connection with these two forces. We'll label it something else. We'll call it something else. But it's actually, behind it, it's... In some way, it's this, this, this force of faith or this force of doubt and unbelief. And we see a characteristic here. It's victory. When it comes to faith, it's victory because we're believing in the Son of God. We're connected now to the Father who is with us. Uh, Psalm 46 and 1, God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Joshua 1 and 9, a uh, favorite from my youth. Have I not commanded you, Joshua? And that's us too. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For I, the Lord your God, will be with you wherever you go. So the spirit of faith is we shall overcome. So what's the difference? If, if overcome is faith, then obviously what's going to be the spirit of doubt and unbelief? It's going to be not overcoming. It's going to be this idea of defeat. Uh, that we're not going to overcome. I don't care what you say, we're not overcoming. That we're not going to make it. I don't care what you tell me, we're not going to make it. That it's probably not going to go well, just like it always does. And this negative pessimism being at the heart of doubt. Pessimism. I came across this article at, at the library and bring this up. This is called Demotivational Quotes for Pessimists with a Sense of Humor. How many of this is for you? Don't raise your hand. Demotivational quotes. And if you can't read it under that picture where it says pessimism, it says this. Every dark cloud has a silver lining. 
but lightning kills hundreds of people each year who are trying to find it. <laughs> Homer Simpson, trying is the first step toward failure. Unknown, the best things in life are actually really expensive. <laughs> W.C. Fields, if at first you don't succeed, try, try again, and then quit. <laughs> all right, I, I, man, I'm getting, I don't even want to read all, all these. Stephen Wright, the light at the end of the tunnel has been turned off due to budget cuts. There you go right there. <laughs> you get that spirit there. Here are four main characteristics of doubt and unbelief. We don't call it that, but it shows up in this way. And what we're going to look at is how to resist, because this comes to all of us, the temptation to doubt this world we're living in, the flesh that we're living in, this body that's not been saved yet, it has a certain nature, it, it, it will go in a way of doubt, it, it, it'll get upset and, and it'll take off on us. I heard a minister say you can trust your body about as far as you can throw it. Boy, how many of you have discovered that? Boy, that's true. So what to see? But before, let me give you this before we look at it, because there's, there's an encouragement here, a strong encouragement, you could say, admonition in Hebrews. We just read the Hebrews 11. Why he ended up talking about that in Hebrews 11, go back to Hebrews chapter 3, and I want you to hear this. I'm looking at it in two different translations. He's talking to Jewish believers who were struggling. They were being challenged to leave their faith, all right? And he's talking to him, he says, and Moses indeed was faithful. This is five and six. And Moses indeed was faithful in all God's house as a servant for a testimony of those things which should be spoken afterward. But Christ as a son over his own house, whose house are we, talking to the church, if we hold fast, hold on to the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope we have. I'll notice, firm to the end. Would you all say those words with me? Firm to the end. Faithful to the end, we could also say. Notice we're going to make it to the end. How many here, you're going to make it to the end? Yes. Wow, you're going to make it. Some of you might have clapped just because somebody next to you clapped. <laughs> Are we all that excited? You know, are we all really there? All right. I mean, I've been, I've been not there. You? <laughs> How many have not been yay? How many have not been yay in life? I have been there. Have you? How many have been like boo about life? Is this it? Is this what? What am I doing here? What am I facing? How many as a kid, don't raise your hand, said, I didn't ask to be born. <laughs> Anybody remember that one? I didn't ask to be born. I've told you this before. I remember, I forget what grade it was. I was this little kid. I got mad and upset, and I said, I'm running away. And my mom said, okay. <laughs> and I went out, I ran out, and I was out there for a little bit, and I came back home. I found out I wasn't so bad. Listen to this in the New Living Translation. But Christ, as the Son, is in charge of God's entire house. What was that, Charles in charge? And we are God's house. We belong in God's house. But don't run away. If we keep our courage and remain confident in our hope in Christ. Now, he's going to give us an example of why we need that. We're going to have to hold on in this life. Like a bulldog, I am not letting go of my faith. For that is what the Holy Spirit says to us today, church. When you hear his voice, and we are, don't let your heart get hardened because of what, what we're going through, the things we challenge. Don't harden your hearts as Israel did or like Israel did when they rebelled and doubt and unbelief stuck in, when they tested me in the wilderness. And notice what, this is amazing. Notice what the result was of this. You go down into verse 19. It says, so we see that they, Israel, could not enter into the promised land because of their unbelief. And I remember a while back, while, 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 while back, I was sitting there and the Lord just dealt with me. Did you notice it doesn't say they could not enter in because of the giants? 
but it says it was because of their unbelief, which means it's not necessarily the circumstances in life that we face that is necessarily the issue, but how are we going to respond? And where, where, where are we? What's the, our condition? And it's so important, important <laughs> how we protect ourselves and protect our heart. Man, we're living in an age. There is a lot of stuff going on around us that's not of God. Have you noticed? Man, there is a lot of rough and tough stuff, and there's attitudes in this world. There's certain attitudes. And, if, and man, if you don't watch it, you'll just get swept on, along with it. The Bible says how there, this world, there is a rebellion going on against God. And, and many people, no, we're all just lovely and awesome and pure and holy. There's no rebellion going on. Are you, are you sure? Everybody's awesome sauce towards God. When you read the scriptures, that's not the case. There's some rebellion going on that we get rescued from. And you know it's already, it's already, we get it from Adam. Adam started it. He started, it says he knew what he was doing, and he just, he chose, and he went that way. No, no, no. And it shows up. It shows up in his young, this nature. How many have ever heard a child go, mine? Well, what's that? And how many of you know as we get older in the flesh, that doesn't go away? How many have ever felt it since being a child? Mine. <laughs> the, the selfishness. Protect. We have been saved and we've come out. We've been rescued from the powers of darkness. We're no longer in that kingdom. And so here we are. But there's this deal of trying to be pulled. Trying to be pulled, you know, to, to let go. And, and, I'm, and I've seen it, and I've been challenged with it myself. This pulling to let go. But here we're going to see, we're going to see that these are things we can resist. And God is so merciful and gracious, and he will stay with us, and he will stay with us, and he will stay with us, and he will teach us how how to grow in our faith and how to stay strong and, and how to hold on to our faith so we're going to finish our race. Again, how many here, we're going to finish our race? Are you with me today? We're going to finish our race. And, and uh, four, four characteristics to doubt. Uh, and they're usually not called doubt, but I want you to see how behind these things we are to resist. This sneaky, subtle deal, because it was very subtle how, how the enemy was able to get this into Adam and Eve at the beginning. But here's four, and we're going to start working on it um, here, which are, number one, nature of doubt and unbelief, stubbornness. We're going to look at that again. It starts showing up in stubborn, stubborn. Number two is sarcasm. There's a good kind of sarcasm, and then there's not. Uh, I should have said mocking sarcasm. It will start showing up in that. I heard a minister say one time, the devil always gives himself away because he's a mocker. It'll just start coming out and mocking. Uh, the other day, Darren Penley sent me a video clip. And if you don't know Darren Penley, I'm not even going to tell you. Darren Penley sent me a video clip the other day of a man looking up at a bird in a tree. And the man says, hey, is that a mockingbird? Is that a mockingbird? And the mockingbird says back to the man, is that a mockingbird? Is that a mockingbird? <laughs> I thought that was pretty good. Is that a mockingbird? And he said, I thought you'd find this funny, and I did. <laughs> Complaining. I know it's getting a little bit quieter <laughs> as I go along. We call it complaining. In the scriptures, it tells us the source of it. It's the effect of a cause. And all of this is, we can see it with Israel in the wilderness. And then criticizing is another. 
These are four main characteristics of God's come out. We have to watch this nature, these things. Cynicism. So we looked at stubbornness the last, last time, and we talked about Thomas. I, I'm looking, I'm going to show you, it wasn't just Thomas. You know, Thomas says, I refuse to believe it. You're saying he's alive? I refuse to believe it. That was his condition. But he wasn't alone. Actually, if you go back, all the disciples were like Thomas from the get-go. From the start, they were there, there too. And they'd gotten to where they'd gotten stubborn. And I want you to see why. They were with Jesus three and a half years. How many know if, if the disciples were with Jesus three and a half years and they still messed up and they still had their failures and their hang-ups and the Lord helped them bring them out? But how many like the idea if the disciples who were with Jesus, they messed up? Uh, there's hope for all of us. I thought you'd get more excited about that. If they were just as human as we are, and the Lord stayed with them through this, but he, he tested them. You'll see that he tested them here. And he was strong with them. Jesus, how many believe that Jesus was love manifested? That he was compassionate? But he also, there was a strong side to Jesus where it says he would rebuke his disciples. And I'm concerned that we're living in an age where you can't, there's, there's no rebuking. And the spirit of love and concern. How many of your children were in, in, going in a certain way, in a dangerous way, you would raise your voice a little bit? Like if the child's heading in the, towards the street, you know, you might speak up. Hey! You know, there's times in life where we need a stronger word. I don't want to use the words politically correct. It's been overused. But we're living in a time where you, you can hardly get there. Where, oh, you, 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 you're hurting my feelings. I've not even started. <laughs> yeah, but I know where you're going. You might be in, implying I need correction. Well, oh, Lord. I just did sarcasm. <laughs> You're implying I might need a strong word. Friends, we all do. We all do. It's the way of life. It's the way of growing up. There's going to be, and if we're not, man, it says the Lord corrects those he loves. And I've been praying and asking the Lord, and he, he's endeavoring to get me to move more over into this area as a pastor, as a teacher in this area, stronger at times, as needed, in this area of correction. And this is an area of, we, 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 can, if we just get lazy and we're just kind of laying back with the spiritual disciplines, and this stuff will sneak in. And it'll try, and it'll try to, in a sneaky way, subtle way, try to take that, that faith, that confidence we have, and then actually, you know, there's the stubborn, and then the sarcasm, and then the, the complaining, and then, but, but the good news is, if the Lord brought the disciples out, he, he can bring us out, and actually, we can keep from it. We can keep from going in that direction. The Lord shows. show us. I want you to notice in Mark chapter 16, the other disciples. We pick on Thomas. Notice the other disciples. Now, after he had risen early, verse 9, on the first day of the week, he's alive. He first appeared to Mary Magdalene, from whom he had cast out seven demons. Now, notice, she went and reported to those who had been with him, that is, all the disciples. They had gone, they were in hiding, while they were mourning and crying. So here they are, they're all locked up, all the disciples, Peter, John, Andrew, all of them, and they're crying, man, it's over, it's over. And here, here she comes, Mary Magdalene, who's been set free, and she's seen him, he's alive. And when they heard that he was alive, she preached the gospel to him and had been seen by her. Notice what it says, they refused to believe it. They refused. Notice that the attitude's in there. They refused. They'd gotten to where they had an attitude now. And you might say, yeah, but you can understand. Let's see how Jesus does <laughs> with them. I understand. All right. So, they shut her down. No, we refuse. Uh, get out of here. Good news, though. Here, the disciples get another chance. 
at it. They get a sec second chance to believe and to be open to let go of the stubbornness. Verses 12 and 13, keep going. After that, Mary Magdalene, he, Jesus, appeared in a different form to two of them. I believe the Lord helped me to see why this was going on. Notice he appears to Mary Magdalene, not to the disciples. He appears to Mary Magdalene, and then she goes and tells him he's alive. He doesn't appear to them yet. He just has somebody go and tell them. Could he be watching to see their response? Are y'all with me on that? Could he now be watching? Go tell them I'm alive. Go tell them. And he's watching, and she goes, he's alive. He's alive. She sang Don Francisco's song. I mean, uh, some of you don't know that. Dolly Parton sang it. He's alive. He's alive and I'm forgiven. Heaven's gates are open wide. He's alive. That was horrible. <laughs> I can really sing it if you want me to. <laughs> I remember as a kid, man, sixth grade, being at Avenue, mom and dad were playing that. They made us kids come in and, and playing it. Listen, mom's crying. Listen to this song. He's alive. With our shag green carpet, baby. <laughs> Dancing in the family. Shag green. He's alive. He's alive. <laughs> what was I talking about? He's alive. Mary Magdalene, go tell him. Then he appears to two others. What's he doing? And it wasn't the disciples. It was followers, too. One of them was Cleopas. We know the name of one of them. We don't know the name of the other. It was in Luke. tells us it's Cle Cleopas, Cleopas. And remember, they're eating, and Jesus is talking to them, talking to them. And finally, they were, their hearts were burning while he was talking. Then it says he disappears. Then they're like, that was him. That was him. But then again, what's Jesus doing? And I realize what's going on. If you'll notice, it says, what else does it say? While they were walking to the country, he, he talks to them. And it says, they go uh, to the disciples, to tell them he's alive. All right? But they, and I could say again, but they again <laughs> did not believe them either. So here, man, they had twice. Jesus sends them, sends them, and he watches their response. Could the Lord be watching our response yes. Yes. to what's happening in life? Because things we have, and he's watching to see how we respond. How many have ever spied on your children? No hands went up. Come on now. How many have ever watched your children and they didn't know they were watching you? Let me say it like that. How many have ever seen them in action and they didn't know you were, they were watching you? You know, like they go out in the backyard and you look out the window to see how they're going to do, see how they're going to be. So he's watching. And then it says, I guess Jesus had enough because he comes and shows up himself, right? So he comes up, and it says later then, verse 14, it says later he appeared himself to the 11 disciples as they were eating together, and then he rebuked them. <laughs> Woo! You would think it would have said he comforted them with all they've been through. But does he love them? Right? Is there love here or not? He knows what's going to be going on. He rebuked them for their stubborn unbelief because they refused to believe those who had seen him after he had been raised from the dead. Then he goes on and talks about how he teaches them. He starts talking to them about the prophecy, and he encourages them, and their faith grows strong. And how many know the disciples turned out all right? So can we. So here's what I want you to get here, what's going on. What was really going on it wasn't just stubborn. That was just an effect. What was really going on in this condition? And I believe the Lord helped me to see it, that behind it, because, I mean, they, they knew. They had the faith. They were, hold on, Jesus told them more than once, I'm going to die, but I'm telling them I'm going to be raised again. He even told them on the third day I'm going to be raised up. But what had happened is, and this is part of this spirit, this negative spirit that tries to sneak in in our lives, they simply, listen, they simply had given up. 
That's where the stubbornness came from. That's where the, all the, what was happening in their lives, somewhere right in this area, they had given up. They just thrown up their hands and said, I, I just give up. And I, <laughs> I've been there, you, and I know you have. You just, you just want to give up. But aren't you glad the Lord doesn't? I know it's a little quiet. We're talking some stuff today. But aren't you glad the Lord doesn't give up? I was watching a video of a fellow, uh, one of these near-death experiences, and he had been through a lot in his life. I mean, challenges. And uh, ah, I'd, I'll tell this again. Maybe even show the video. His testimony is amazing. But he, he'd gone away from the Lord and everything. But he, when he saw the Lord, and I believe this testimony, he said the Lord just was smiling at him. And, uh, and uh, they said, the Lord just came up and hugged him and hugged him. And he said, the Lord said, listen, you turned your back on me. I never turned my back on you. Is that not powerful or what? I never let you go. I never let you go. How can we come out of this? What's the key? And I'm going to give you a key right now because it began to rise back up out of the disciples and they came out of the not giving up. And this has to do, this is number eight in our list of what to know about faith. And this is the good news because you already have a head start in this challenge uh, right here. And that is every Christian believer already has faith on the inside of them. You already have this spirit of not giving up on the inside of you. And if you're learning, you'll see it, it will rise up in the challenges of life. It'll rise up on the inside. And you'll learn how to, to yield to that. Ah, it'll be like, no, 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 no. Everything in your flesh and emotions, I want to give up. But this faith that you already have on the inside of you, it will begin to rise up and say, no, no, you're not. And you yield to that. And then you find yourself saying, no, I'm not going to give up. I'm going to go forward and I am going to make it. Listen to 2 Peter 1 and 1. It says this concerning the Christian believer has faith. Simon Peter, a bondservant and apostle, just like the disciples ended up with it, special messenger, personally chosen representative of Jesus Messiah, to those, that's me, that's you, who have received and possess right now by God's will a precious faith of the same kind as ours. Now notice, by the righteousness of God, our Savior, Jesus Christ, by God's will, you have on the inside of you already as a believer, you have this faith that will lead you out and keep you free. Are you glad you have the faith that's already on the inside of you? Listen, are you, what, you wouldn't be here. <laughs> You're here. We were talking about this yesterday. Uh, in prayer, we were talking about, about all of a sudden it came up about not giving up. How are we reading in the book of Acts where an angel showed up and was talking to Peter and told him, listen, don't give up. The Lord's not through with you yet. How many like that idea? The Lord's not through with you yet. I'm tr I'm tr Lord, I'm trying to get this out as best I can. Listen, the Lord's not through with you yet. It's not over. I don't care how old you are. I don't care how young you are. I don't care if you're in the middle. How many are in the middle? How many are in the young? How many are in the older? Has any of you been born yet? How many have been born? How many of you are alive? Alive and kicking? Yeah. Listen, we're coming against oppression right now. We're coming against it in the name of Jesus. Be free. You already have in you by the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit, the greater one in you, you already have this head start. And the things like, if you look for it, it's right there. It'll start rising up on the inside of you. No, we're not going to give up. I would, uh, uh, I'm going to close with two, two verses for you. And this means, and I want to get this wrong, no matter if you've missed it, it's not over. Don't give up. If you failed in some area, in whatever, if you've crashed spiritually, whatever it might be, if you've crashed, even crashed or fallen, 
How many of you have ever fallen before on like a big fall? Anybody ever fallen, like hit your face? Like fallen before? Like people are looking? <laughs> Anybody ever been running? Like, I remember, uh, Lord, I, I haven't thought about this in years. I was, man, what grade was it? Third grade? Second, third, third, third grade? I remember I was trying to impress a new girl at school. We were outside, and I don't know why. I was waving at her, and I wanted to show her, and I started running backwards. <laughs> what comes over guys about girls do silly stuff? You know, like those birds that do those dances? <laughs> when they see a female, have you seen that? It's the opposite in the animal kingdom. <laughs> There's some guy who's going, Ugh. Anyway, I thought, and I ran into a pole <laughs> and knocked myself out. <laughs> they had to go get the nurse. I knocked myself out. <laughs> Trying to impress a girl and bam. <laughs> she knew who to stay away from. That dork right there <laughs> fell, you know. You know, I told you we grew up evil Knievel, right, and all that. You t how many ever, you, trying to learn how to ride a bike, you did? Anybody ever crash on the bike? Did you give up? <laughs> Can you still ride a bike? You didn't, that's become like the joy of my life right now, riding my bike. Big part of my life, riding my bike. But I found a picture I saw, and I said, man, I did that. Somewhere there's an eight millimeter picture of me jumping over the neighborhood kids. I don't know where it's at, I'm gonna look for it at my mom's house. But I found a picture, this isn't me, but it looks like this right here. Can you bring up that picture? Nope, it's not that one. <laughs> nope, it's not that one. Nope, it's not that one. Did I send it? It's a picture of a kid jumping over kids. A black and white picture? I don't have that one. Here it is right here. <laughs> it's hilarious. Oh, it's not here? Where did it go? <laughs> wait a sec, wait a sec. Let's just pray. Lord, we thank you for the service. Amen. <laughs> I'll show it next week. Because it won't work. That's my bad, my bad, I, I blew it. Here you go, Psalm 145 and 14. I wanna leave you with this. You can play, brother. The Lord upholds all that fall. The Lord lifts up, Psalm 145 and 14. The Lord lifts up all that fall and raises up all those that are oppressed. How many like that? That's what I'm trying to get my heart out to you. Even if you've fallen, and we all have, we've all had our challenges, the Lord lifts up. And just a big part of the nature of what we're talking about is learning how just to get on your feet, spiritual feet, Learn how, because the Lord's wanting us, this is faith school. He's wanting us to learn how to resist. No, I know, Father, forgive me, and how many know he does? And it says he forgets it. Forgets it. Like I throws it into the sea of forgetfulness. And he says, come on, come on. Let's keep going, let's keep rolling. And we yield to this spirit of I am not giving up. In Jesus' name. Hebrews 12 and 1 says, and this is God's words translation. This is the second. Since we are surrounded by so many examples of faith, how many have loved ones on the other side? It's like a stadium cheering us on. I believe the number one thing they're cheering us on is says, don't give up. Don't give up. Life's too short. Don't give up. You can do it. You can make it. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, 
Let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips, trips us up and fall. Get back up. And then it says, and let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. Or as it says here, especially the sin that distracts us, we must run the race that lies ahead of us and never give up. Let's just say those three words with me, would you? Never give up. Uh, one more time, never give up. Tell the person next to you, never give up. Tell the person on the other side, never give up. Tell the person behind you, never give up. Tell the person in front of you, never give up. Say to my mama, never give up. Say to Darren Pinley. Never give up. See to those two guys in the sound booth. Never give up. See to that guy standing back there in the dark. Never give up. Say to Mikey on the keyboards. Never give up. Say to me right here. Never give up. Say to Susan on the front row. Never give up. Say to everybody in this room. Never give up. Amen. Woo. Glory to God. I've not been like that in a while, Lord. Yeah, that felt good. Woo. I said that felt good. That felt good. That's what Jesus was doing. That was his rebuke. Hey, you gave up. I said, never get up. And they came out, boy, yes, sir. Yes, sir, never give up. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your word. We thank you for the spirit of faith. We feel rising. We feel rising up, Lord, that we have in our hearts. You are the great encourager. And may we take this word, your precious word with us today, that you lift up all who fall. And you lead us out of any and all oppression. And we will give you all the praise for it and all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen.